What up, everybody? Hey, uh, let's talk about uh, everyday carry. Now, I'm, I'm on record as saying that I'm not really big into everyday carry. And when I say that, I mean <clears throat> more of what I consider the toy aspect uh, or, of everyday carry, quote unquote toy. And this is just my personal opinion. Uh, and I'm talking about things like uh, spinners and tops and all kinds of exotic uh, custom-made beer uh, bottle openers. Those things, to me, they don't hold a lot of interest to me. In fact, things like fidgeting toys and spinners and tops, they hold zero interest to me. I don't even own any of that stuff. Um, and as far as things like bottle openers, I've got a few bottle openers. I've got one that you would consider a custom bottle opener that I've featured in another video. But I'm not super big into that because, let's face it, um, with a limited amount of disposable income, how much are you going to spend on bottle openers, tops, and spinners? Uh, unless you just collect those items, I don't see a reason to have a lot of them. When we look at the philosophy of everyday carry, you have some, some main little subgroups, uh, niches, cliques within this everyday carry world. Um, the, what you see in front of you is my er everyday carry kit. And this kit is built, uh, purpose built for utility. It's not a survival kit. Okay, so for everybody that might comment and say, I need this, this, or this for survival in my kit, this is not a survival kit. Okay, if you need to build your survival kit in a pouch this size, you're not going to do a lot of surviving on it. I'm sorry, you're not going to get that much in this pouch. And you're going to see, I've got this one stuffed pretty full. But like I said, I'm leaning more towards utility. What you see in front of you is a Maxpedition Everyday Carry Pocket Organizer. Um, the model number is 0246B, I'm assuming for black. The size is 5 inches by 7 inches by 3 quarters of an inch deep. And I initially bought this hoping, since it was called a pocket organizer, that I could carry it in my main cargo pocket of my pants or shorts and I cannot it's too big for that uh, it is it's not too big for me to carry I'm not saying that because it's not that big five by seven by three quarter inch it's just too big for the majority of cargo pockets and typically I wear uh, LA police gear tactical shorts or pants they have a, a big cargo pocket, they're tactical pants. And this pouch will still not fit. It is too big for the cargo pocket. But one of the cool things about it is it's a, a clamshell built pouch. And on the back of it, you can see here, you've got two rows of hookup here, you know, for Molly or, or whatever. <clears throat> and you can carry this pouch horizontally horizontally on your belt let me flip that over and if you need to use it you just unzip it you open the clamshell down and from your belt in the appendix carry uh, that will all be up front <clears throat> on your waist and immediately accessible if you need it um, now this is supposed to be three quarter of an inch deep you can see it is more on the scale of two and a half or three inches deep at its deepest now that it's stuffed full of crap so this is definitely you can see it in my hands and i've got medium sized hands this is a, a sizable pouch it is too big for pocket carry and maxpedition does have some smaller versions uh, that would not be too big for pocket carry, but would cut down on the uh, storage capacity in them. So that is a balancing act depending on how you want to carry and what your purpose is. Uh, you can see the outside of the pouch. It's got a little Velcro field here for putting morale pouches. And you can see I've got the American flag on there. God bless America. You've got this uh, mesh pouch on the outside. It does have a section of Velcro right here. 
uh, while it's not a zipper or a flat pouch, I believe that Velcro would keep things in it under normal use. Keep in mind that it is mesh and it is open to the elements completely. So if you're around water, dust, dirt, whatever you put into this compartment is going to get dirty or wet. <clears throat> All right. You've also got this carry handle here. And, and with my Express, the way that I plan on carrying it, which is appendix carry up front, I, that handle is not really useful to me. And I feel like sometimes it gets in the way. It's a little floppy. I wish it had secondary connecting points right here, maybe some snaps that would keep that uh, tight to the body no matter what. But, you know, I didn't design this and I didn't make it. And for all intents and purposes, it's a great pouch. All right, let's unzip this thing here. And we're going to go through what my everyday carry kit is. And keep in mind, this is built for utility because everyday life, 99.999999 infinitely repeatable percentage of people do not face at least in the United States let me preface this by saying I'm going to talk about the United States because that's where I live 99.9% .9 of people in the United States do not face emergency survival situations daily uh, we are a blessed country, and no matter what's going on here, it pales in comparison to many, many places in the world, if you keep up with world news. And I have personally never been in a catastrophic, end-of-the-world, terrorist uh, survival situation, and may or may not ever be. So, again, my kid is built on utility purpose for daily use. Uh, if I'm going to jump in the car, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to go to the store, I'm, me and my fiance are going to go out for dinner, um, and we're within 20 miles of home. Uh, we both drive new cars, so I don't need tool kits per se, um, and we're not so far away from home base that we can't get back, even if we had to walk. Um, so keeping that in mind on this, let's get this thing open. We're going to go through what I have in it. Uh, all right. Now, on the left-hand side, in the back here, there is a slot. And this, this pocket is the full width and the full depth of the pouch. And on that side, I have a notebook, a little notepad. Uh, you can see I've got zip ties zip ties right here uh, also uh, you can see right here I have a pen and that is a zebra it's a full stainless zebra pen uh, it's one of the hybrids between the 701 uh, pen and the 402 uh, taking parts off of each of them and building one that's totally stainless from end to end and it is it has the modification to take a uh, space pen refill I think that if you're going to carry a pen uh, with you, it needs to have a space pen refill, a pressurized type refill that can write in most conditions. It can write wet, it can write cold, hot, upside down, whatever. Um, from left to right, you see here I have a titanium spork. This is a Snow Peak Ultralight. It was inexpensive, it was, I think it was $12 on eBay. It is very light and thin. You're not going to use it for much other than eating if you need it. Tucked in underneath that is a Topps Knives emergency whistle. This is a multiple chamber, uh, super loud emergency whistle. And if you know Topps Knives, they, you, know, you get one of these with your knife purchase. All right, next we have a six inch titanium pry bar. Um, this is a full thickness pry bar. It is six inches long, so it's a little bit bigger than you typically see for pocket carry pry bar. This one in particular is made by Maverick Customs. Uh, there is their information on Facebook. Uh, very good purchase from them. Uh, good communication, good price, good product. All right, the next thing you see is a smaller pry tool, and this is more of a dedicated bottle opener. And uh, this is a Brad Southerd Rhino Pry. 
and Brad is a, a custom maker, and I bought this Rhino probably years ago. Um, I honestly, I can't even remember where. I was really active on uh, Usual Suspect Network at the time, and Mr. Southern was really coming on the scenes, and I picked that up. The next thing you see here is uh, Klein's electrician's uh, shears, scissors. And uh, they are small, compact, they're carbon steel that's nickel plated. They have uh, wire stripping notches in them. They have a type of very fine, very fine serrated type of edge that you find on very high quality scissors. And these scissors are fantastic. Great cutting ability in a compact package. The next thing you're going to see is the True Utility Micro Driver. Uh, now, I did a video on this. I'm going to pull that out real quick. And uh, what that is, is it's a little micro driver. The bits self store in the body. It's got two uh, Phillips head and two flat head bits. You can see the slot on the end. You can use a key or a coin. You can see I've drilled out a coin here and put it on a split ring to keep it all attached. And you just slip that down in that slot and you use it to turn it for uh, leverage and for torque. All right. And that's a cool little tool. I did a video on that that I wish more people would have seen because you can pick one of these up for less than $10 on eBay. And uh, that's a pretty decent deal. And if you're wondering about that rubber cap, that's actually a rubber mouthpiece cover that vapors use on their uh, vape units. So uh, we've got that in there. So on the left-hand side, you've got your writing utensil and material. You've got uh, zip ties. You can eat. You can uh, do emergency signals with the whistle. You can pry open bottles you can cut with scissors you've got a screwdriver and let's not forget right here we've got about 25 feet of duct tape and that is just rolled up on a cardboard core it's nice and flat and tucks in right in here and it's not going to go anywhere so you've got a lot of ability on this side of the pouch now we're going to go to the right hand side first thing you see up front fire We've got a little big mini uh, in here, and if we ever do need to make fire, we can. Again, it's not a survival kit, so I'm not carrying multiple ways of making fire. I just need this one. The next thing, you have a cutting instrument. This is a cold steel American Lawman folder. Uh, it's very flat. It gives you just about a three and a half inch blade length. This is one of the newer models in CTS XHP blade steel. So you get a great blade steel. The super strong triad lock, uh, grippy G10 handles. This is a fantastic knife. And I think along with the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 is quite possibly and arguably uh, one of the best everyday carry knives there is on the market at any price. The next thing we have a, a pair of wild or wildy, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, uh, pliers. These are a little slip joint plier. They're only about five and a half or six inches long. Um, they're drop forged. They're a high quality American made tool and they're less than $10. It's just a little set of ignition uh, wire pliers but they are fantastic in a kit like this. They are better than any, any, okay, any multi-tool plier out there. They are better. I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, I used to work selling knives. I've handled every major type of multiple multiplier there is from all the major brands. These do better, period. The next thing you see is the 4.7's Prion P2. That's a double uh, AAA light. It's uh, two output levels with a max of 220 lumens. All right, back behind in the main compartment on this side, you're gonna see a first aid kit. And it's just a very small, very thin plastic container. It came for free with a, a bigger first aid kit and I've got that stuff with just the basics. Uh, Band-aids, Neospore, and some uh, 
um, bandages, um, some tape, there is Benadryl, Advil, Tylenol in that kit, a uh, pair of tweezers, just very basic, very compact kit. Uh, the only thing I'm lacking in it is maybe some uh, water purifying tablets, which will get put in there. All right, so on this right hand side, you see I've got half the day right here taken care of because it's dark half the day and I've got a flashlight. Uh, I've got a pair of pliers, I've got a knife, got a source of fire, and got first aid. So in this kit, uh, I have covered what I need for light utility work, uh, communication, uh, light repairs to something. I can make fire, I can cut things in multiple ways. Um, you know, it's, it seems to me to be a pretty complete everyday carry kit as far as utility goes. Yes, I could have, uh, you know, specialized it into a survival role. But let's face it, in the survival role, you're going to need a little more storage than this. You're going to be able to need to have food on you. Uh, you're going to need to be able to have a firearm on you, uh, spare ammunition. Uh, real tools. You're going to need full-size tools. Even if it's not a giant roll-around tool chest, you're going to need some full-size tools to do real work in a survival situation. Uh, this kit is oriented, like I say, to everyday carry utility. Uh, I can do just about anything that I think that I'll need to do out of this kit. And uh, I can carry it on my body. It's not too awful heavy. It's not too awful bulky. I uh, slap that up on my belt up front. Utility carry. It's nice and flat. It stays in close to my body. And uh, it's easy to open, easy to access everything. So, that's what you get in my first, or my everyday carry kit. Uh, yours may vary. If, uh, if anybody has any suggestions, uh, throw them at me. Please don't tell me to put a multi-tool in there. I already have tools that are better than multi-tool. Um, you know, I don't need a multi-tool with a pair of pliers that's not as good as this pair of pliers. I don't need a multi-tool with uh, uh, some stamp steel, flat stamp steel screwdrivers because I already have a small screwdriver in here. Um, I can already cut better than any multi-tool knife with a knife here. You know, I can pry. If your multi-tool has a small pry bar in it, it's not going to compete with this full thickness six inch pry bar here. Um, you know, it's, I'm just not real big on putting a multi-tool in a kit like this if you have individual tools. Um, well, I don't know, guys. Uh, I don't really have much more to say about this, and we'll keep this video short and uh, go ahead and get it uploaded and see what you think. All right. God bless everybody, and soldier on.